In this video we're going to discuss the basics of Java inheritance. And inheritance is when you have a derived class or a subclass that inherits properties from a base class or superclass. For example, let's say you created a class called person. Person had name, age, weight, all kinds of fields associated to person. And then later on you needed a class called student. And a student is exactly like a person, but let's say the only difference is that the student has a student ID. And that field wouldn't belong in person it would belong in a student class and rather than having to copy all the fields and methods from person you can inherit everything from person into student that is a non-private instance field or or method and constructors are not inherited and we're going to take a look at an example of inheritance right now so let's go with the same example we were just talking about and let's create a class called person new class person and I'm not going to put a main method in there because it's a class that's used to build person objects so it shouldn't have a main method and this is going to be our base class so let's create some instance fields private string name and private int age let's keep it really simple and let's create the getter and setter methods and rather than me typing it all I'm going to show you guys a quick shortcut in Eclipse you can right click on the file, go to source, generate getters and setters. Select the fields that you need getter and setter methods for, click OK, and there they are. You don't have to type them out. Once you, you know, understand how they work, save yourself a lot of time. So here is a very generic person class. And let's create a class that has a main method in there. Let's call this demo the main method in there and let's create a person object person p equals new person and we could see that we could say p dot set name to mary and p dot set age to 20 so we can call the set and get method so we can even print out mary's information Dot get name is dot get age years old. Let's run the program to make sure that works. All right, done. So now we're going to create a subclass of the person class. Let's create a class called student. We're going to create a new class and we're going to call it student. And again, this doesn't have a main method in there and and we know that a student also has a name, also has an age, and should have get age, set age, and get name and set name methods as well. So rather than me having to copy all this stuff and paste it all in student, all I need to do is say student extends person. That's it. That is the magic word right there, extends. And I'm not going to include anything else in my program. And watch this. I can right away start creating student objects student s new student and I can say s dot set name and set age and look at this the set name and set age methods are available even though the student class is empty and it says that they're both coming from the person class that is the base class of student set name to Bob and s dot set age to 21 and I can even call the get methods for the student Bob by changing all the P objects to S and run the program and here is the student's information and here's the cool part is that I can add new stuff to the student class that only belongs to student and doesn't belong to person because a student is a person but a person is not necessarily a student you don't know if that person is a student or not but you know that every single student is a person that's why student extends person so let's add a new field, private int student ID. And I'm going to quickly add the getter and setter methods the same way I did before. Source, generate, getters, and setters. Bam, there they are. And click save. And let's go back and check this out. I could say student object s dot set student ID to one, two, three, four. But that same method I cannot call for person object p. p dot 
set and notice that I don't have that option available so I can only set a student ID for a student object not a person object because a student has a student ID and a person may not be a student so they shouldn't have that option available and I can print that out as well get student ID and let's just print that out to the screen and that's pretty much it and in the next video we're gonna learn about constructors and how to add constructors in your subclass